everyone. This is uh, Ed Weiser, Reef Riser on uh, Reef to Reef, and I'm with Todd Willard from Reef to Reef, and we're going to be talking today about what is uh, cyanobacteria, and he's uh, found some new information on uh, the identification of cyanobacteria. So, Todd, you want to take it away and see what we got today? Yes. Um, the uh, cyanobacteria that we know as a classification of cyanobacteria um, actually, ha we have real, uh, we have two different forms of cyanobacteria um, that's common in our tanks. Um, we have our, our standard cyanobacteria, um, and we have uh, spirulina bac bacteria. Well, it's classified as a bacteria. It's classified as a cyanobacteria, and 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 these two bacteriums. Uh, in appearance in the tanks look absolutely identical. Um, they both form red mats. Uh, they both form very rapidly um, and uh, they're treated in two different ways though. Um, but the identification part of cyanobacteria is very important when it comes to uh, uh, treating a tank for cyanobacteria. Um, so people will notice. Um, here's a good uh, identification point of cyanobacteria versus spirulina. Um, if people notice that it goes away, ma it magically disappears at night uh, during lights off, but then reappears during the day, um, and it keeps doing that cycle, well, that's not our classic cyanobacteria. That is spirulina. Um, the classic cyanobacteria will form that red mat, and that red mat will stay there. It will not recede. It won't change color. Um, it might fade a little, but not go completely clear. Um, the, the actual cyanobacteria chain within itself really has no movement. Uh, now, like spirulina, um, its cell within itself actually has a lot of activity. So what they do is they coil back in during the night. So this is real key to me is being able to identify uh, for a proper treatment between cyanobacteria and spirulina since they are identical looking in the home aquarium. Right. They're more of a, in their, and their treatment of course is different from one problem than the other problem. So, that makes you get, uh, that's why some people have success and some people don't, I would think. Yes, yes, and, and that is correct, Ed. Um, when people treat their tank and, and they get frustrated that it's not going away, um, it's because that treatment is probably not working because you have actual cyanobacteria. I mean, and there's 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 a few treatments out there, um, so it's yeah. If it's if it goes away with particular treatments like um, that's commonly used, um, it's going to be spirally. It it it, it kills it hundred percent. And um, typically with tanks with the actual true cyanobacteria strain, um, it's, the treatment will fail. And then frustration and questions get asked. Right. So what, uh, what treatments uh, for uh, the work with uh, spirulina? Uh, that, 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 that... Um, uh, treatments for spiral, I mean, the, the, the very first most common treatment in, in today's home aquarium is, is uh, chemical. It's the most widely used, um, and it is highly effective against spirulina. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's within, within 24 to 48 hours of spirulina, you will see, will recede, and it will come back. Um, now, with the actual common strain of cyanobacteria that we see, those red mats, this particular just doesn't work against it. And, um, and there are other treatments um, 
peroxide. Peroxide is one of the biggest things that I use in a lot of my work. And um, it's highly effective against it within 14 days. So, um, so to me, the biggest thing is identifying uh, between cyanobacteria and spirulina. And, and there, are, there, is some, there is a form that I have found that's very accurate in determining these two things. Okay. What is the, what is the, so what is the, what can we look at to find exactly which is the form that we got? Is, is there a, do we need to use a microscope or would you? And, 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 and that's a good question. Um, I understand and realize that not every aquarist has a microscope. Uh, so this is where I, I stepped further, um, further out thinking about the general people. And how can we identify this? How can we positively show ourselves what we're dealing with? Well, it's real simple. It's a simple process. Uh, and I use this process over and over and over. Um, and I recommend it to people that I talk to um, online. And it's, it's as simple as taking just a couple cups of tank water and grabbing one of your red mats, your, your cyanobacteria mats, uh, put it in that cup of water, and add simply one milliliter of peroxide. And if it is cyanobacteria, in 24 hours, it will turn green. And the water itself will turn red. Now, with spirulina, that doesn't happen. Spirulina uh, won't change color. It's, it will stay the way it is, and, and there's really no effect on it. So to me, that's become a real positive ID between our common cyanobacteria and spirulina, since there are really two totally different treatments that need to be done. Right. You don't want to be uh, chasing your tail on a treatment, uh, and, and actually you're doing the you're wasting your time messing with if you're doing with one treatment or the other so there's a, you always want to positively identify what the problem is positive identification um i do believe between these two species species of cyanobacteriums needs to be identified right. um and um if you think it's one and you're using chemicals to combat it and it's not going away more than likely you're going to add more and you're going to, you're going to add more um, thinking that you're not adding enough. And, and this is, this is the kind of thing that, that I want to try to help um, to keep from overdosing tanks with chemicals that are, are that aren't going to be useful for the problem at hand. Right, and cause frustration in people uh, breaking their tanks down because they're they're just yes. frustrated yes. that they can't fix the problem, you know. Yes, yes. So, so like I said, um, it's easy to determine if you have cyanobacteria. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen uh, peroxide, three percent hydrogen peroxide. Just a three percent hydrogen peroxide, and how much do you put in a glass, or how much? Uh, what? What's your one one mil one milliliter for about two cups of water, and you'll see the result within 24 hours. Right, just sit it on your kitchen counter and look at it yeah. the next morning or something. Yep, sit it on your kitchen counter and wait. And 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 I've even seen it react even sooner. But the average time for average working people, you know, <laughs> it's is the next day. You add that one milliliter. To the water and the next day it'll be green and your water will be red right and what is that doing what is that uh the peroxide doing breaking down the the cells the wall cells and causing it to split like that it, it is it is physically breaking down the the cell structure of of that cyanobacteria um and and that's and that's where you're going to see that's that's why you see the pigmentation in the water um as it's breaking down the cells of that cyanobacteria. Okay. 
So now once we've gotten, uh, we know that we get a positive ID on one or the other, uh, do you want to talk about the best, well, we know one of the best treatments for the spinal there is uh, the uh, chemiclean, right? You can use that. That's pretty much the gold standard on that spinal yes. era. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, spirulina. Spirulina. Uh, um, chemiclean is very effective against it. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 actually that's really the only thing I have found um, that really combats spirulina. Does hydrogen peroxide dosing? Does that have any effect on it or no? Um, so far, currently, hydrogen peroxide, unless it's in, ma in in very large amounts, does not seem to affect the cell structure of spirulina because spirulina itself is not built of built of individual cells. They they are it's one big cell uh, wrapped around kind of like a corkscrew. Mm -hmm. So they're not built with individual cells. So it's a lot harder for the, the oxidizing agent of peroxide to break the cell down because it's, in reality, one long cell and a lot of cells. Mm -hmm. um, with cyanobacteria, it's multiple cells within that line. And it's easier for that peroxide to get in and break those individual cells down. So that's that's more of what I have found for uh, the treatment between cyanobacteria and spirulina. Okay. So and uh, so for treatment of uh, cyanobacteria, our basic standard is to use uh, what percentage of peroxide per container to to the helps with that, the the this the standard the standard that uh, the base standard that I use for uh, the treatment of cyanobacteria is uh, one milliliter per ten gallons of tank water, and 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 I I do this just to just to uh, as a safeguard to uh, visualize and monitor any side effects, um, which to date um, there hasn't been. The, any proven facts that there is side effects, I just haven't found them uh, between me and, and everyone I work with. And um, <clears throat> at about the seven-day mark, um, if you're still seeing the cyano but it's reducing, you can actually you can actually dose one milliliter per eight gallons, and you dose it for 14 days, and it's become real effective on the treatment of cyanobacteria. Um, and that's probably what I would call the baseline. It's, it's one milliliter for eight gallons of tank water for 14 days, dosed every 12 hours. And, uh, and that what percentage of peroxide, because there's so different minutes. Yeah, yes, 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 it's 3%. Yeah, 3%, it's, yeah. The, it's the standard 3% peroxide that you can, you can purchase pretty much off any shelf. Right, you can go in any drugstore or any grocery store and pick it up. Drugstore, drugstore, pharmacies, it's the standard 3% peroxide. Okay, because I know there's a lot of people get all confused with it. There's so many different ones. If you try to order it online, there's uh, all food grade and all kinds it's, of stuff. Yeah, 35% food okay. grade, and, and uh, it's, it's got to be it's got to be clear um, right. that 3% right. peroxide is to be used. Right, and um, is uh, so we want to keep it at fourteen days. Should you do any like? A, is there like a after you say you've gotten rid of it? Do you recommend any kind of like a a maintenance dosing or any time every so often uh, to dose the anything? Yeah, the maintenance dosing. Um, uh, for instance, if you're if you were dosing your tank at uh, one milliliter uh, per eight gallons for fourteen days. Then I su I suggest personally uh, just to make sure that we have gotten all the free floating cells or any cells that have released or come apart um, to do a, a one milliliter per ten gallons maintenance for two more weeks. Okay, now that that gives them that gives you that little safety buffer that keeping it yes. keeping it away from your tank and stuff. 
Yes, because these these cells are very small. Uh, they're spread very easily. So we uh, to make sure you know that we have it under control. Um, uh, two weeks at uh, one milliliter per ten gallons. Right, and that'll and that that pretty much cuts it out and takes care of the problem for everybody. That yes, you found in your research on this, so it's good. Yes, it's good. Yes. My 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 tank personally has been cyano free uh, uh, since I have started working with uh, cyanobacteria. Right, and it's just doing that simple simple uh, running of the test and doing yep. that takes care of the problem. Yep. So Sim simple process. Okay. Is there anything else you want to bring up on this uh, topic right now that you can think of? Are we good for the day? Today's talk. I think that pretty much covers. Um, um, what I'm aiming for, uh, the positive identification of cyanobacteria okay. right. and, and, uh, conclusive, um, solutions to it. Right. That's great. So that's great, Todd. Keep up the good work and, uh, we'll touch back pace with you next month and see what, what new, new topics you're talking about. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.